Hey, what's going on? It's King Kevin checking in. I want to make a video about fear, overcoming your fear, and knowing how to use fear as fuel, as a catalyst to get to the next level. Because fear is a good thing. You know what I mean? Despite, you know, contrary to belief, fear, the power of fear, the energy of fear can be used to your benefit if you know how to apply it, which you're going to learn in this video. So please pay attention, ask me questions uh, in the comment box below and share the video. Now, one thing I learned about fear in my own experience is that it can literally cast a shadow over all your hopes and dreams. I mean, fear can literally paralyze you. Fear can actually make you think that there is no light in the tunnel when there actually is. A lot of times there are situations that we may have and we give it so much, you know what I mean, importance. We give it so much presence in our life when in actuality we shouldn't. Fear is the opposite of love. People think that hate is the opposite of love. No, fear is. Hate comes from fear. People fear what they don't understand. When you don't understand why you can't find a job, why you can't pass this test, why, you know what I mean, you're going to be facing this charge and you're in court and don't know what to do, especially when you didn't do it. But even if you did commit the crime, yeah, you have to know that and come to accept that, yeah, you may have to do the time as well. In life, there are many principles. You know what I mean, there's a cause to effect. There's a reason for the season. You know I mean, there's a perfect time for everything. Well, let's not say everything, but every righteous thing is a perfect time for. I, myself, I don't entertain fear because I know the power it has. I know that I can take that fear and instead of dwelling on the thing that I fear the most because it can't come into existence because you're putting it from your spirit. People often think that whenever you talk about spiritual things, that's always something good. You know what I mean? That that's the best thing is, you know what I mean? It's in my spirit so it must be good. No, there are evil spirits as well. There are bad spirits as well. You know, when we must understand that, as a matter of fact, even in church, there are bad spirits. There are people come there for many different reasons. Some truly come to fellowship. Some come because of their friends. Some come because they know they can get a good word from God there. They can get their spirits refilled back with the righteousness of God. You know, um, they deal with the different issues of the heart because the majority of life, and the issues of life comes from the heart. So that's why in the Bible it says to guard our hearts. You know I mean, by any means necessary, guard your heart. Because if you don't guard your heart against fear, it's going to fill your heart with so much negativity and darkness that you will be paralyzed from moving forward with your goals and your dreams. And I've lived that. You know, time and time again, I've been in them shoes where fear tried to play games with me. But then when I understood the power of God and understood the power of the word of God, understanding the powers of my spirit, understanding the powers of my words, because God is in me. You know what I mean? We all are little gods. Whether you want to acknowledge that or not, our ancestors did a great job at that. Our African ancestors, they understood that we are gods on earth we are god's manifestation on earth and when a man and woman come together you create a world you know what i mean of love of power and of the same consciousness of that other person when you two mer worlds merge together and so if you have two people with a powerful heart two people with a powerful consciousness high consciousness and understanding the powers of god in earth then you know that there's nothing formed against you will prosper that's the way that it should be but due to the fact there's so much options out there to absorb negativity and the same token you know so many options to absorb good energy as well but the negativity you know you got the television you got the phones you got the computer screens the social medias 
You got people which can text you a lot of BS if they want to. Pick up the newspaper. I mean, it, the list could go on and on and on. But the beauty of it all is that you should take the responsibility. You should go after the things that you want in life and act as if you have everything and all the resources necessary to make those things come to pass. Surround yourself with good paintings. See this painting behind me here? This is a Japanese painting. I'm sorry, Chinese painting. Um, and you will see on, you see on the top right up there or top left, I guess it depends on which angle you are. There's some writing up there. And what that is, it's saying a house on a mountain. And if you look at this painting closely, which you have to really look at it real closely, there's a boat at the bottom of the mountain and then there's a house on the top right here. And that's why they call it house on the mountain. And the reason why I, I brought this to your attention I put this in my living room because I wanted to have the opportunity to look at something positive that makes me smile. God knows, Lord knows, I love water. I love nature. I love houses and I love boats. This picture has all of that. So I surround myself with that. I surround myself with a lot of great and positive books as well. As a matter of fact, I'm reading currently right now two books. Um, I'm finishing up. The Up From Slavery from Booker T. Washington and also Dale Carnegie's book called How to Win Friends, no, How to Influence People and Influence Friends, which is a powerful book published a very long time ago. Both books were published a very long time ago. As a matter of fact, Booker T. Washington's book was published back in the 1800s, late 1800s, uh, the original, you know, um, it came from his diaries or whatever. And... Um, Carnegie's, Carnegie's book came out in 1936. Now, both of these books speaks about, you know, powerful women and men in history that had done great things, you know, accomplished great feats, overcame so much adversity in their lives that they had no choice but to be successful because people depended on them. You know, Booker T. Washington explained in his book how when he was building up Tuskegee, um, you know, Tuskegee was actually first a farm. You know, so when he built this institute, there was so much fear of how he was going to come up with the money to build this school. You know, the first building costed them $6,000. At first, when he was building the first, you know, cabin or whatever on the premises, it was only about $400 to do then when they really want to do a building with many rooms and a couple of floors, it was $6,000. But luckily he had people around him that believed in the vision, believed that the black folks needed to have the school, that it was a must for the culture, the race of black people in America, that they were willing to go on the front lines with him, go out there door to door, knocking on doors, letting people know what they were doing. I mean, Mrs. Uh, Davidson, which was his second wife, because his first wife had passed away, unfortunately. But she, his first wife was very supportive as well. You know, she raised money, she did things with him and the committees and stuff. But the second wife, I mean, she would travel out the state of Alabama and she would go into different um, states in New York, Baltimore, speak to people on trains. I mean, she, in, in her words, it was sometimes so exhausting that she couldn't even take off her clothes when she got home. So tired, you know, just fell asleep in her clothes and even sometimes embarrassed to ask for the fees. But what I like about Ms. Davidson and Booker T. Washington and the rest is that she understood, they understood that if they continue to push forward, then there's no way fear would defeat them in their hunt. And on top of that, it was they felt responsible. They placed this, uh, um, I want to say feet, but they placed this responsibility on their shoulders. To build Tuskegee was, was tantamount to getting freedom, to be free. The, the Emancipation Proclamation, it was a tantamount to that. You know what I mean? They knew that this was critical. They had to build it because if they did not build Tuskegee, then 
they would have let down the whole black race. Because this school was going to be one of the first of many great institutions for African Americans. For all people, literally, um, in America, but specifically, to make sure that, you know, America was going to have its fair share of black people that were engineers, builders, scientists, agriculturalists, whatever you want to call them, all of that. You know, he wanted to make sure that happened. But he did not let fear overtake him. And I don't want you to allow fear to overtake you either. You know what I mean? Keep in there. Hang in there. You know what I mean? Just whatever you got to do. If you don't have any money, act as if you have money. Don't allow the lack of money or the lack of food depress you so much that fear just places that shadow over you and it continues to follow you no matter where you go and all your conversations, even your text messages. You know what I mean? Your Facebook posts. You know what I mean? Or things you put on Twitter is just depressing. Uplift yourself. Put some positive things on in front of your eyes, like this painting here. Or some positive books. You know, like right here, I have tons of books right there. I guess you can see it um, from my library there. Um, even my you know, dog book on the bottom. And, uh, you know, I, my picture of my mother. You know what I mean, I, you know, I do these things because I understand the power of positivity, the power of vision. And so I hope this video was a blessing to you. And, uh, yeah, check out my website, kevindorover.com, um, or go to visit me at um, thecouragetobelieve.com. Blessings to you. Bye-bye.